Welcome to the Business Finance Bulletin, episode 198. Welcome again to the latest Business Finance Bulletin with me, Rob Warlow from Business Loan Services, the commercial finance expert. In this bulletin, impact of the Carillion collapse on small businesses, no more tax payment by credit card for self-employed and record-breaking year for Crowdcube. Well, as I record this bulletin, um, all over the news, of course, is the collapse of the UK's second largest construction firm, Carillion. Yeah, Carillion went into liquidation, and of course, this has had big ramifications, both politically and economically, within the UK. Obviously, our thoughts go out with those employees who have now lost their jobs, and I say there's going to be big political questions as well about uh, the number of contracts that was given to Carillion. But of course, there is another side story, which I'm pleased to say is um, gaining some traction action within the media and that's the knock-on effect of small businesses. Now Carillion itself was a great user of subcontractors. A lot of the contracts they had were subcontracted out and if you think of it like a funnel it was all funneling down subcontractor to subcontractor to subcontractor to many smaller businesses and they are the ones who have really been hurt by this because of course they've got outstanding debts which are now no longer going to be paid and that will have a major negative impact on their businesses and already many case studies are already coming out of businesses who've said they've had to lay off their employees and in some cases close up shop now because they'll admit they won't be able to trade any longer without that money being paid. So what are the lessons from here? Well of course the first thing to do when you're extending credit to a business is to ask the question is that money safe? You are essentially becoming a banker by giving credit terms. Now, obviously, in this case with Carillion, many of these firms thought that because the government was really being the end contractor, that all their money was going to be safe. But it is a salutary lesson about you're never too big to fail. So always take a good look at how safe the business is that you're giving credit to. In terms of that, also, don't become over-reliant on one firm. Um, You shouldn't really be, your turnover shouldn't really be more than about 25 to 30 percent out to one business and equally the amount of money you've got outstanding at any one time shouldn't be more than 25 to 30 percent. If you are you're really becoming over reliant and dependent upon that business being successful and paying you. So make sure you spread your risk. One other way that you can protect yourself, of course, is to take out trade credit insurance where you can insure that debt. So if it's not paid, at least the insurance company pays you. Not many businesses look at this, but there are a number of providers of trade credit insurance out there, such as Eula Hermes, Atradius and Coface. Go and check out those sites to see if you could insure your debts. And of course, the last thing you can do is just make sure you have very clear policies and processes in place to make sure you're continually chasing payments. Now, if you are one of those small businesses that are being affected by this fallout, and the UK Finance, um, which is the finance association for all of the UK banks, has said that its bank members are pledging to put emergency measures in place in terms of increased overdraft limits, uh, payment holidays, and fee waivers. So if you are impacted by that and you think there's gonna be a hit on your cash flow, please go and visit your bank and specifically say that you are gonna be affected Affected by Carillion and ask for whatever support you can. Obviously, our thoughts go out to all those people affected and by that, and I hope that you will have a successful future and you will ride through this. With effect from the 13th of January 2018, a new piece of legislation came in designed to protect consumers against credit card charges. Yes, I'm sure you have read that with effect from that date, companies can no longer apply a credit card surcharge if you are paying by credit card. Typically one and a half, sometimes three, four percent. That is now being outlawed. Now, obviously, from a consumer's point of view, that's great news. And I'm sure, as already been in the press, some firms have found a way around this by introducing but something called a service charge to still counteract that payment. So from consumer's point of view, that is fine. But from a small business's perspective, now suddenly you can't pass that charge on. However, there's been one un- unintended consequential knock-on effect of this. Um, HMRC has said that with effect from the 13th of January, if you are um, an individual or self-employed, you will now no longer be able to pay your self-assessment tax by credit card. HMRC says, well, look, we cannot legitimately take this hit of the credit card charge ourselves. Therefore, from this date, 
you cannot pay your tax by credit card. Now that's a major blow for many self-employed sole traders because many of them um, do pay by credit card because obviously it's a way then of making the payment and yet they're able to spread the payment over the remaining part of the year. That avenue of finance has now been removed. So what are your options if you've suddenly been caught out by this? Well, um, don't forget there is a great product called a short-term loan. Now a short-term loan is what it says. It's a loan payable over a short period of time, typically up to 12 months maximum. And that should be sufficient for many businesses to be able to pay their debt and then spread the payment over that 12 months. So if you have been caught out by this sudden change in payment options, just drop us a line, info at businessloanservices.co.uk and we'll have talk you through the options of what you can do to pay your tax. When it comes to raising money to finance your growth plans, aside from debt and traditional lenders, one method, of course, is, if you're a limited company, to sell shares in your business. In exchange for giving away 20% of your business, you receive fresh cash back, a great way of growing your business. And you can also do this now via equity crowdfunding. And of course, one of the larger sites and more well-known ones is Crowdcube. And at the end of 2017, Crowdcube has announced that it had a record-breaking year. Um, it raised equity in a total amount of £130 million. They did that for 325 companies, which was an increase of 23% on the previous year. In terms of the number of investors, well, there were 120,000 individual investments made, so quite an active platform. Um, also, looking at the deal size, there were over 32 deals which exceeded £1 million. So you're getting well into venture capital territory there, so it's really good going. So if you are thinking about different ways of expanding your business and you don't want to go down the bank route because perhaps you're a startup or you've got a large element of a tech side to your business, which does make it more difficult for high street bank lending, then take a look at Crowdcube. Just go along to their website, which is crowdcube.com may be an alternative way for you to raise growth finance. Well, here we are at the end of another bulletin. As ever, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to give it a like and a share. Look forward to being with you again next time. In the meantime, have a great, successful and profitable week. Bye-bye now.